Um, thank you all for coming this evening. I know it's a little bit challenging sometimes to come out again um, after a long day. And thank you also to Lita and Michelle for Santa Cruz Challenge for having me here this evening. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about nutrition. Um, I came to nutrition, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my stories. I came to nutrition because I hit rock bottom. And why I teach now is because I don't want people to have to hit rock bottom to, in order to, to, wake, or to wake up, to see what is, what is it we're eating. Um, we have been taught that, um, you know, kind of nutritionism, which is um, kind of fat. You know, we, we, we were taught uh, low fat is good, and now it's, it's, we're coming around, uh, coming around saying, no, we need fat. You know, uh, we've been taught that um, eggs are bad, and saturated fat is bad. But in actuality, it's um, their building blocks, and so it's what we need. Um, so my story is that um, at five, six years ago, at five weeks postpartum, I had um, my third baby at home, and um, everything was fine. However, at five weeks postpartum, I could barely walk, and I was um, my neighbor had taken me to the hospital, and I had to come home take care of the three kids, and I was diagnosed with a uterine staph infection. I was then um, had IV antibiotics for five days, and we know a lot now about our gut and what that does um, to to my, my gut, and it pretty much destroyed it. Um, however, thankfully for Western medicine, probably about 100 years ago, I could have died, right? So I was grateful for that, and I listened to them, and, and, I, and I did the antibiotics. They sent me home with antibiotics, and at um, two weeks, after I got home from the hospital, I was again stricken with pain and um, worse than labor, I remember. And um, I was, uh, I called the doctor, said, Come on in, let's take some tests. And I was, um, I had, was diagnosed with a superbug called Clostridium difficile. And if you know the hospitals, if you um, have heard of that, it's more commonly known as CBIC, but it's an opportunistic bacteria that pretty much took over because of the situation in my gut was. Um, was affected. So, the, you know, and ironically, what was the um, what was the the solution was more antibiotics. And um, when my doctor likened it to cholera, I knew okay, I gotta listen to her. I don't. She knows more than I do. All right. But I was um, I was tired, I, and so I, I did it. I knew I had to take care of my kids, and and I did it, and um, it worked. But it only worked for like two weeks, and then it came back again. And that's what CDIF does. And that's what a lot of diseases do, is they, they keep coming back because I wasn't getting to the root of the, the problem. And um, thankfully, at that time, my sister said, have you ever heard of the GAPS protocol? Has anybody ever heard of the GAPS protocol? Mm -hmm. okay. So the GAPS protocol st stands for the Gut and Psychology Syndrome, or the Gut and Physiology Syndrome. And what the basis is, is that um, uh, what that there's a connection between the gut and the brain. Toxins in the gut means toxins in the brain. And so you, you treat the gut, you know, you cannot build a house without a strong foundation. You go to the foundational level and then you will, you will get better. And I was, I was, okay, let's try this. What else can I do? You know, I'm pretty much where, low. And I, um, I started making the bone broth. I think most people know now, we've heard talk, have you had Kitchen Witch? Um, they're, they're coming um, in two weeks. Awesome, okay, so I know you guys were, were kind of, it's in the news, it's, you know, that um, brothelies are, are popping up and bone broth and everything is, is a, um, is a uh, how do I say, an, an option now. And so six years ago, didn't really hear much about it, you know, and so, um, but I started making bone broth, I started making my own ferments, I started um, doing my cultures and basically eating a whole foods, healing foods diet. And I had never felt so great, and it was awesome. And so, um, get a little nervous. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's funny. Like I talked to the but I feel a little. I'm here, so I apologize. Um, We're safe. I yeah. <laughs> We're good. Um, and so, um, it, it, and it worked. And so it's like I have to tell people this. I have to teach this. And so I, so I went back to class school, and I became. Um, started teaching about how to um, do ferments and cultures, and then I'm like, I want more, and so I became a nutritional therapy practitioner, and then I am like, I want more, and so full circle, I became a GAPS practitioner two years ago, and so it's kind of like, that's my journey, so that's why I'm here in front of you talking about nutrition, um, and it's so great because this field is growing so much, I mean, this, I just had to take a, um, just take a look at this book, it just came out yesterday, The Good Gut, and it's, and it's just, it's saying exactly what Dr. Natasha has said, that our health resides in our gut. 
We, we, you know, we are bacteria. We, we are trillions of cells of bacteria. How do we take care of our bacteria? We eat well because we are, um, we are subjected to so many toxins, whether it's from our uh, food, whether it's from our environment, whether it's from, um, you know, just we, when I do gaps, we go all the way back to your, to your mother's pregnancy, you know, even to your grandmother's, because that's, that's the, the genetic piece. But what we have learned through the Human Genome Project and studying the microbiome is that you have the capability, the possibility to actually change your genes, okay, by the food you eat. And that's a new study called epigenetics. Okay, has anybody ever heard of epigenetics? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing. So maybe, you know, you, you, you might have some fear because you have somebody in your family, I mean, above you, that has, um, has had a diagnosis or a disease. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do it. So, um, so I'm here to basically tell you that food um, can either be your strongest, your strongest, um, your strongest form of poison, yeah, your slowest form of poison, or your strongest form of medicine. You choose. Okay. So I'd like to give you um, a handout to what we're going to go over, and it's ten tips to eat a nutrient dense diet, and. Um, Hi, Maureen. And the reason why our food is so important is that every cell that builds every tissue, that builds every organ, that builds every system is dependent on nutrients to, to work, to function. Okay? So where, where have we lost, you know, the, the, the um, it, it, it's been disconnected with how our food supply has um, changed in the last hundred years. So I feel like we are at a time we have to, um, we have to evolve and we have to take charge of our, of our food. And so how do we do that? Does anybody have any ideas of how we can do that? Of how we can change the food we eat to look at the, um, the food we eat as more as medicine? What are some choices that we can do? Does anybody go to the farmer's market? Yes. It's knowing your farmer. It's knowing the backyard garden. It's um, <coughs> Choosing, you know, um, even choosing simple things such as what are you storing your food in type thing to, to eliminate toxins, you know, bottled water versus, you know, getting a whole house with filter sort of thing like that, okay? So we're going to go through this right now, and um, some of these might be totally obvious, some of them, but I think, you know, we can hear and hear it again and again. So number one is to avoid processed food. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, um, but I want to just make sure that it's even processed food at Whole Foods and New Leaf still processed foods. You really have got to take a look at the ingredients. Um, I, I said, you know, it was Michael Pollan who came up with the term nutritionism because it's the selling of nutrients. Um, one time for a class, I had to, I went to Safeway, um, just to kind of take a look, and I spent about an hour there just looking just at the marketing, you know, and just what a, what a game it is. It's because cheap food can sit on the shelves longer, you know, but because of that, it has so many ingredients that you do not need. And you can, um, you, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the food babe. Yeah. Okay. So she, you know, definitely pros and cons a lot. She gets slammed a little bit because she, there's no, the, not the science behind it because she doesn't, she doesn't have the credentials. However, I kind of, um, I kind of, what is she, what is she doing? She's bringing attention to something that's really serious. She's gotten Kraft mac and cheese, for example, to get the dyes out of their mac and cheese. You know, so she is doing good work, and I do think she definitely has some, um, uh, some valid points. So avoid processed food. Number two, um, kind of two and three go together, but organic is preferred. Because when you talk to an organic farmer versus a con conventional farmer, you know that they are using techniques that are going to add to the land. You know, they do work like cover crops. Um, does anybody know Everett Family Farms mm -hmm. up on Old San Jose Road? Um, I've done a couple tours up there. And it's just so great that um, you're able to see that they're going to do a cover crop of buckwheat on the strawberry fields. So they're replenishing the earth. And that's what organic farming does. So it's making that choice to choose organic um, instead of conventional because um, I just, I, I'm taking a toxins class right now, and the average conventional strawberry has over 84 different chemicals in it. 84? 84. Wow. Wow. Just with, because of all the things put into it, you know, like all the, the different fertilizers and, and everything for the ground. And so, 
you know, you're taking that in. And our bodies, you know, we have natural detox systems. Our bodies want, you know, we have our skin, our liver, you know, our kidneys. Like, we have a detoxification system. However, in, in how we are living now, we are overburdening it with toxins. So it's too, too many toxins, okay? So it's just, we kind of have to, where we can, do the work. And then other times, yeah, you have to live a life. And so sometimes, you know, my, I, I, that's been my work because I was so focused, you know, when I was in my healing. And, and um, I sometimes have to, I realize I get too, oh my God, I have it perfect. You know, and that's, and that's part of the, the, the balance too. So it's, it's, it's a process. Um, number three is avoid GMOs um, because they, as like it says, it's there. There's so many um, issues with the GMOs, whether it's um, diseases. You know, they have been tracked to genetically uh, modified organisms. Um, GMOs, I think, is, is just a big science experiment in the sense that they were brought in um, in 1996. And like when I started looking at them, I'm like, wow, 1996. That's not too far. That's not too long ago. We don't know the effects. So we really have got to. Um, Pay attention, and I'm mean, even looking at the grass that my kids are playing on, it, you know, because uh, the fertilizers out in the soccer fields and everything. It, those these things all contribute to the toxic load. Okay. Um, number four is a big one because it's eat meat, but quality counts. Um, I know we live in Santa Cruz. There might be some vegetarians in here, and um, vegetarianism definitely has its merits. However. Um, I am a fan of um, meat How, that is not um, conventionally grown. So it's not what's called a CAFO, which is a um, concentrated animal feeding organization where it's kind of, you know, like when um, you read Diet for a New America, it's like we're all vegetarian <laughs> because those pictures, you know, you know we would like to buy that. Um, however, if you buy your meat that is raised as it should be and the, the cows are grazing on grass or um, the chickens are um, you know, eating the worms and everything, you're getting that nutrition. That's, you know, um, Weston Price, he's one of the, my kind of um, uh, pioneers in nutrition that I, that I follow. He said, uh, you know, get food as close to nature as possible. And that's what we're doing when we're getting, you know, animals that are um, eating what they should. We get the benefits. I used to worry that my kids were not eating enough um, vegetables when they were little, but they were drinking raw milk. And, you know, it's like I had somebody tell me that, don't worry about that up until like four, four years old because the cows doing the conversion, the vegetable conversion, the grass conversion, um, for, for them to get the benefit. So it's like, okay, you know, so nature, nature is designed to work. Any questions? Great, good stuff. Yeah. All right. So another one is um, five: eat quality, um, healthy fats. We, we need fat. Okay, fat sustains us. We we do not want to be low fat. A lot of people still have a hard time with. I leave cleanses, and they want to be still fat free. And I'm just like, no, eat fat, lose fat. <laughs> you know, because fat is also builds. Um, builds healthy cell membranes, it builds our brain. Um, uh, our heart, saturated fat, is really good for our heart. You know, it's like, really? Um, and I, I, when I was, I told you my story about when I was in the hospital and I was still breastfeeding, and I couldn't breastfeed because I, the stronger antibiotics, and so I made my own um, formula with the Weston Price um, mm -hmm. recipe. And you guys would be amazed about how many fats you put into it. You know, I mean, so coconut oil, um, olive oil, like all these different fats, because that's what human breast milk is. It's like 70% um, fat. Um, so it's pretty cool, you know, but that that's what we're feeding our babies. And yet, we're, we're still thinking that that's not good. Um, and also, there's fat-soluble vitamins. A, D, E, and K, um, you know, those are only absorbed in the presence of fat, okay? So, and, and then the other piece is, it is we need to look at, do we have a healthy gallbladder? Are we able to absorb the fats, you know? And that, and that um, connection is to our, um, what builds a healthy gallbladder, what help builds a healthy bile is healthy fats. So it's, you know, it's, it's that, that feedback loop. Um, consume bone broth as part of your daily routine. Very excited that Kitchen Witch, you know, they're, they're an up-and-coming company. I think they're, they're doing a crowdfunder or Kickstarter campaign right now because they, they really want to grow. And I think um, bone broth is, is nature's, is amazing. I have a book back there that <laughs> is a new book that um, is all about 
basically all about broth. And it's funny is that there's not a lot of um, science behind it in the sense that that's like you know people scientists they, they want the the the, um, the results, but yet you have the the, the thousands of years of stories that they've healed. And like, I, my story is actually in that book, um, in, in that Nourishing Broth book, because um, it, I believe it healed me from my seed. I mean, I'm like, like it, was, it was a non-issue, like what, what was going on. And having bone broth always brings me back to center. Even now, like within the last six years, I don't get sick. Because when I, when I feel like I'm getting sick, I'll go right to the bone broth and fermented foods. It brings me back to center, and, and it's just. And I think about the time before two thousand nine. Um, I used to get sick often. You know, I was a teacher, and I, I, I would get sick often. And, and now it's like, no, not, not. I don't have time for that because I know how to get myself well. So that's been one of the biggest gifts. Um, number seven is a probiotic foods in your daily diet, and the reason why we do probiotics. Um, you know why we do probiotics? Do, oh, do you say do you yeah, use? No, go ahead. Oh no, I just I just oh you okay. Yeah, yeah. So we you know we've been talking now that the, the probiotics and the reason why we want probiotics is because it's the good bacteria. We have a balance in our gut and like the C diff. A lot of people have C diff. Like five to ten percent of the population have C diff actually in, in their in their gut. It's the balance that gets um, you know out out of out of balance. So um, probiotics help replenish the good bacteria. And, you know, I didn't realize it, but when you look at your health, you have to look at your whole story. You know, it's kind of like taking a look at that, because I forgot when I was 20, I was an exchange student, and I had typhoid. And so, did that play in to me get being more susceptible when I was compromised with the, you know, staph infection, you know, stuff like that? And I totally believe it did. And it took another um, nutritionist to tell me that, because, you know, I, I had forgotten. I was just like, I was in the now. And um, it's like, no, you have to look at your whole thing. And so, um, include probiotics. And, not, and probiotics, is, is they're, um, they're raw food, they're enzymes, they're, they are um, really uh, good for you. Like cultured um, sauerkraut has, um, do you know, like how much more percentage of um, vitamin C than cabbage? You know, so it's like a ridiculous amount more of um, uh, vitamin C. Number eight is uh, sea salt, Celtic sea salt, rich in minerals. Um, and because when you get the other salt, the other salt is there's like aluminum in, in uh, like morphine salt. You know, I mean, there, there's other ingredients in that salt that your body doesn't know what to do with, and it's both a preservative as well as um, it won't clump. You know, how she's like doing like that, so so um, it won't <laughs> clump. Um, and so, why would you want that? You know, anti-caking agent um, in there. So you want um, Himalayan salt, Celtic sea salt, and the reason why is because it is. Um, sorry, I've been moving a little bit. Okay, good. Um, because it's with minerals, you know, we want vitamins and minerals. Those, those are the things that that um, help our help our system to go. Um, number nine, uh, hydration. There are so many issues that really could be taken care of just with hydration. One of the biggest ones is constipation. You know, if anybody deals with constipation, um, headaches. You know, uh, even achy joints and stuff. Sometimes you just need to up the water. Um, and, and bring, bring more water in. And it's kind of a, a recipe rule of thumb is you take um, your body weight, half of that in ounces is kind of a good recipe of what you could um, be drinking. But then, you know, play around with that. Okay. It's a soft, soft, soft guideline. Um, per day. Per day. And so, and number 10 is one of the ones that I like the most and I like to talk about is, is to cook. Because before six years ago, I did not like to cook. I did not like, I mean, I, I did cook because I had kids and I did cook, but it was like, okay, here's the quesadilla, here's the, you know, I mean, I did what I, what I, what I could. Um, and you take back your kitchen because that's where the magic happens. And just, you know, start in the kitchen, start by asking your um, friend, family member for a, for a bone broth recipe, um, you know, and, and then that is the basis of sauces and soups and, and so many great things. And now I pretty much eat at home probably about 98% of the time. And because when I go out, um, 
it's kind of sometimes you know that you don't want to know all the information. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Um, there are not a lot of restaurants in Santa Cruz that are totally clean because I, I feel like I'm kind of, kind of the um, canary in the coal mine because my body tells me right away that you know some you, if you feel too, like you know when you eat start eating clean you go to a restaurant and you're like oh they use bad oils you know I even heard of some higher end restaurants in town that are you know they they split their um, their olive oil with canola oil and it's just the fact of not knowing that canola oil is not a good fat. You know, what is, and I kind of glazed over a little bit, I'm going to go back to that. Um, the second is like, but what are the good fats? The nature piece, animal fats are the best fats for you, okay? Um, coconut oil is another, you know, plant-based good fat for you um, to, to cook in as well. Um, so take a look at um, the, where, where you're eating. You can even ask them, you know, I've, I've asked them, like, what, what are you cooking some? Can you, can you cook it in olive oil for me? Can you? Um, and then that there is another one that you might have heard. There's so much information, and whether it's, you know, should you go paleo, should you go, if you're doing CrossFit, you're paleo. If you um, are, you know, some, something else, that you're, you're um, vegetarian or vegan, it's like, how do you know which information is right? And I think one thing we can all agree on is the no foods, okay? And then you need, it's by individuality. What works for me is not necessarily going to work for you. Um, so you have to try. You know, sometimes people, um, that paleo, a lot of people can't do well with it because they need more carbs. And that's, you know, your body tells you. Because we all, you know, another, another piece is like, where are you from? You're, you have a genetic predisposition to digest certain foods as well. So that's another piece that we have to take a look at. And that's another thing where I really like um, traditional nutrition. Um, so cook. And the, la the last thing to, to um, bonus tips is um, to, to be present. Digestion is a parasympathetic process, which means it's like rest and digest. But when we are in how we live, how we work, how, how we do right now, we're eating in the car, we're eating when we're standing, we're, we're, eat, we're grabbing and go. And when we do that, we're not digesting. You know, our food is just going to be sitting there. So when we get bloated, it's because you haven't taken the time to digest. Digestion, you know, could take up to about 50 hours sometimes. You know, you hope it goes a little bit quicker. And you want it to go a little bit quicker, but there's so many pieces to it, you know. And, and how I look at digestion, it's a north to south process. And so if something's going on with your digestion, first thing is, like, am I in parasympathetic? Am I sitting down? Am I, am I looking, you know? being grateful for my meal, that gratitude piece. Um, when you look at cultures around the world and how they eat, it's a little bit different than how we eat, right? We, we, we know it's fast food nation. Um, so, um, because when we are, um, when we are able to sit down and enjoy our food, our brain is sending messages and we are releasing hormones and we are releasing, um, uh, like, um, what else is it? Uh, uh, with gastric, the other acids and, and digestive juices to get to get it going. And so, first one is is um, to put, um, uh, enzymes in our mouth to, to break down our carbohydrates, and then we want to have our have our stomach have enough um, uh, acid to, to to break down the proteins. If we don't have enough acid, then um, then we're going to have those proteins just stick there because they're not going to go. If they're not, it's not acid enough then it's not going to be able to go on to the next stage of digestion, which is the small intestine, and that's where it's that, and that's the absorption piece. So, we're, so you could be eating like a really um, great diet, but you're not absorbing it, okay? So how, how do you build digestion? You turn the page, <laughs> and these are foods that feed your digestion to feel better, okay? This is kind of a little part I made, and I give to my clients, because um, these are things that you want to bring in for healthy digestion. So, if, and with bringing in the nutrient dense piece and bringing in these foods for digestion, you're you're on the way to building up good digestion, good digestive function. I um, I have kids, and I um, one thing I like to do is bring in nutrition when they don't know. Okay, so I just found, I just kind of went around my kitchen like, what are the things that I do that 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 bring in nutrition? One of um, a soup, you know, you bring in the superfoods. Superfoods are really good, high in antioxidants. But one of them, um, bee pollen. Does anybody ever use bee pollen? 
Yeah, bee pollen is an awesome um, addition to your to anything really. Um, but this is like. And in my nursery tradition books, it says exactly what it is, but it basically it's high in amino acids. And um, you know what, what else? Why else it's so good? It's just, I, I love it. I, it's an immune booster. Yeah, it's an so. immune booster. Um, and that's what it's, so you remember, like what we said, going back to the gut and the, the, the housing our, our immune function, is that when we eat like this, and what I found is that you boost your immune system. You know, so you, so you don't get sick. Type of thing because you are feeling good and so when people are saying oh you need um, vaccines or you need this it's like if you're eating healthy you're, you're going to be strong and to be able to withstand the germs because the germs are I mean you know the, the, that, that bad bacteria that often bacteria it's not going to hang on it's just going to go right through okay if your stomach is acid enough because you're eating sauerkraut because you're eating fermented foods because you're using apple cider vinegar does everybody have apple cider vinegar in their house mm -hmm. awesome i recommend apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar is one of those things that's really good for um to build up stomach acid as well okay because remember i said that you want enough stomach acid because what stomach acid um does is it, it kills the bacteria it kills parasites and everything in that first stage of digestion so apple cider vinegar you can take a, a, a teaspoon in water with lemon in the morning Awesome. Um, there's like websites. Like, there's no one uses for apple cider. Vinegar. So you can use it for your detox bath. Detoxification bath is really great as well. Um, you can put a half a cup of that. Um, anybody doing Epsom salt baths and stuff like that? Awesome. Um, we talked about the sea salt. Another one of my great kind of things um, for iodine and um, sea vegetables. Anybody bring sea vegetables into their diet? Uh, one of my go-to's is uh, also a kelp broth, which I just boil up some water and put a handful, I rinse it first of, of, um, of kelp and put it into a, just a, a jar and then let it steep for about 20 minutes and drink it. And I'll tell you what, the first couple drinks, the first time you have it, it's not that good. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's really kind of gross. But then you feel good. You get energized. You, you totally feel great that you crave it. And I crave it. So I love it. But you can add this to soups. You can add this to um, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then I also supplement. This is a great one for everything. I brought two different brands. I'm almost done with this one, but I'm trying this one out. This is um, collagen, gel gelatin. Okay, and um, what this is, it, it's, it's protein, but it's help, help, helpful for joints and everything, but you can add this to smoothies, to um, uh, baked goods, all, all, all sorts of different things I have to soups. Um, and so it, it's basically joint care, but it's, it's, a, it's kind of, it's, a, it's your natural protein powder. Um, when we talk about nutrient dense, and I kind of missed this, I didn't tell you this one. Um, what is the most nutrient dense food out there? It, it, it is animal products, okay? Um, but of those animal products, I don't take a guess what the most nutrient dense. Yes. You know, when, when you got, kind of go to the animal kingdom and when an animal takes down a kill, what do they go for first? They go for the organ meats. When in traditional cultures, when a um, couple, a married couple, you know, what, what would they be given? They'd be given the, the organs, the heart, because they were going to build babies. You know, that is the food that, for your, for your dollar, that's, that's the most nutrient dense you can get. I, I, um, I buy hearts, I buy livers, I buy, um, uh, I haven't done brains, um, but you know, <laughs> I don't know what do they do, but my son, I have a 12-year-old son, and his favorite, one of his favorite foods is hearts, chicken hearts. Um, yeah. But it's in. But what you can yeah. do, yeah. What you can do, saute with lots of onions and yeah. covenant aminos. Um, but what you can do, what I like to do for my other kids who do not like ordinary meat, um, and I don't tell them, is I, I throw it. In, I throw a heart, some hearts or even a beef heart into the Vitamix, and um, then I um, I saute up some pancetta, do some pancetta or some bacon, and then add the heart, and then I add ground beef and make a huge like bolognese sauce. So it just you, you can get it in there even for yourself. Yeah. But, um, you, you really have, you feel the superpower of the, there, there's a recipe in there for a raw beef heart tonic. And I'm like, I have to walk the walk. I really believe if I'm going to be doing in front of you, i got to do it too. And so I tried this, this raw tonic. And um, I swear that after I, did, I felt like I could run a marathon. Like it was like, like a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of 
not have them. <laughs> the reason why is um, sardines. You know, if you're at a quick, one of the challenges is like, I'm hungry, I want home to do, I have to, I have to run in the store. Grab some sardines, okay? Grab some clams. Grab, grab um, something like that. Easy, easy to eat. Um, and then there's the superfoods, you know, the goji berries, all that stuff. And this is just one of my favorite um, smoothies is a banana, some, um, an avocado. Um, I add a little bit of maca, chia, and cacao, raw cacao. That's like my sweet one, you know, and then I'll sometimes add um, some almond butter or something like that. So that, okay, so 